Hello and welcome to my first Oracle Jet lesson. I will teach you how to use Oracle Jet and let's start with what is OJet. It is a modular toolkit. There is a set of open source libraries and open source code developed by Oracle, by the Oracle company. It helps you to build pure client-side user interfaces and you can use web services and web sockets to get the data to populate, uh, let's say, a table in your uh, user interface. And of course, Oracle Jet helps you build web applications faster as it has some advanced functionalities to use. So what Oracle Jet gives to you, it gives you a set of UI components, HTML tags and that have some custom layout or design and pre-built validations and behaviors. It also gives you the two-way binding by using the Knockout.js library. A routing system supporting as well simple page applications and smart resource management by using the required JS module. It also gives you a validation framework with data validators and converters. You can also build hybrid applications. So Oracle Jet gives you mobile native teams uh, for iOS, Android and Windows. It also supports and have support for common mobile gestures and behaviors. It has a built-in responsive design that I call it as Oracle Jet Bootstrap. And you can use some tooling utilities to deliver your mobile apps as an APK using, for example, the Apache Cordova. So you can deliver an APK. Our lessons will only cover uh, the web application development using the OJET's responsive design, the OJET Bootstrap, to be mobile friendly and we will not cover the um, tooling utilities. So Oracle Jet, let's see how to install the Oracle Jet. So firstly, you need to install the Node.js and run the following in the in your command line npm install dash g at oracle slash ojet dash cli. Here uh, I have uh, the ojet get started link so you can see more details about the installation. You can use an app template to create your first application. You just need to go to the directory where you want to create the app and then you must run some commands. The first one will be ojet create app name and then if you want the template or not and we will use the ojet create my first app dash dash template equals nav drawer. So let us do that. Let me open my desired directory in Oracle Jet and then inside it I will run the ojet create then the app name. So it will be my first app dash dash template and then a nav drawer. The Oracle Jet CLI is now starting to generate the, the web application. It will have the template nav drawer. It will not be empty. We will see something. So the app is ready. You need to go to the directory and run the ojet build or ojet serve. About these commands, we will see how they work a little bit later. So the app is there and we have some folders. And let's see the code structure. So we have the source folder. All the code we develop uh, stays inside the source folder. The Oracle Jet modules uh, have a view and a view model with the same name and they are divided between the views and view models folders respectively. Again, inside the source folder. Those two folders will be inside the JS folder. We uh, will see that later. Inside the source JS folder, we have all the applications based code. We will have the views, the view models, and some other JS files or HTML files we want. So you can see the source. Then we have the CSS, the, the Oracle Jet CSS, the index.html file the JS uh, and then you have the view models with 
uh, in this case are all J JavaScript files and the HTML files inside the views. So you can see the about.html is a page and then we will have the same file with the same name but with a different extension, the JavaScript extension inside the view models. Now the main JS file. It loads the app libraries basically. All the third parties libraries are defined inside the path underscore mapping.json file and then the Oracle Jet CLI automatically generates the path to the main.js file and they are loaded there. We can find the main.js file inside the source.js. Then we have the main.js and the path mappings. Here we can see all the third party libraries we can use. We can also add new ones if you need some new third party to, to use inside your application. You can include the path here and it will be um, generated to the main.js file. So opening the main.js file, you can see the dynamically generated paths from the path mapping JSON file, you can see that in the comments as well. And now the app controller JS file where we set up the router and it is also the index HTML view model. The root JS file is where the model bindings are applied using the knockout JS library, where the knockout binding is applied, and then we have the index HTML file that is the app entry point. It sets the layout and loads the object main module. You can change the theme or the CSS and the layout as well here. Um, its view model is app controller JS we saw earlier. So if you open our app folder in our Visual Studio Code, you we can see in source folder then JS the app controller and index HTML files. So they are the view and the view model. In this case, they have different names. So here we have some declared variables to our view model using the this keyword. This is where we are defining inside this nav drawer template is where we are defining the, uh, the routing. We start with all the paths and the names and then the router setup. And then the footer links, well, we will later on, we will have a deep dive on this code and we will change it. So in index HTML, we have um, the layout we want and then all the variables we are using here uh, came from the app controller JS. So here we have a read only variable because it has a square brackets and here we have a read and write variable because it has brackets. And then if you look for the toggle drawer variable, we can see we are defining it in the app controller JS view model that holds a function that returns something. We have some Oracle Jet commands that are very important. These three are the more important ones. The OJet restore that restores all the dependencies and plugins and libraries or web components that were removed. In our Git repository, we only persist uh, the files from the source folder and all the node modules and external dependencies will not be there. So we need to um, run the OJet restore. So we create all those folders and uh, get all the dependencies. And then the OJet build web uh, that builds the application uh, by executing the scripts and hooks. We will see what they are and how to use them in this course. Then we will use also the OJet serve that builds the application and then serves the app locally using a local server so we can see our app. And now I'm showing you that I'm going to my um, first app directory and then I am running the OJet build web to build the application and some folders are also created. The web folder is 
where we will have all the, the code we declared in the source and source folder and all the dependencies we have so we can also minify our code and it will be minified in the web folder using the release type of deployment so the source file will have the code as it is and then the web folder will have the release version of it the minified version so if you want to see our application we run the ojet serve it will open a browser for us your default browser with your application and you can see its interface the nav drawer template uh, gives you these four tabs to navigate through uh, all your models so our article set allows you to binding data it's using the knockout GS library uh, where we use an observable or observable array they are special data binding variables when the observable value is changed by either the UI or the JavaScript view model, meaning programmatically, um, all the references to it will be automatically updated and we will uh, not refresh the HTML element, the value will automatically be updated. So Oracle Jet allows you to use observables to bind your variables and use them with the Oracle Jet component. So you can update your values without refreshing the UI. About the Oracle Jet components, how to use them, we need to load the component by using the required GS define function in our view model that tells the browser the meaning of the HTML tag we are trying to use and then we need to use the OJet components HTML tag in our view. The order matters, so if we want to load something into a GS variable, we must have the variables in the same order um, you define the model's name in the required function and after those variables we can uh, simply load modules if we do not want to store them. We can also load JSON files using the text plugin from the required JS and we can load the files into a variable in our view model. So now some Oracle Jet terminology so a module enables you to create some page fragments where we can develop uh, the business logic using JavaScript and also here as a view built using HTML. We also call the view model's JavaScript code as a module. So then we have the JET component. They are Oracle JET pre-built HTML tags that allows us to have better visualizations and some pre-built behaviors. Then we have the Jet Composite component where we can create our own Oracle Jet components and reuse some code. Typically a composite uses one or more Jet components and adds new logic to it, a new behavior.